Hello, my name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and welcome to this new tutorial series designed to get you up and running with Blackmagic Fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now before we get rolling, there are a few things that I do want to mention. First, you're going to need to have a basic understanding of Resolve. We will be spending a little bit of time in the media pool and edit modules, but most of our time inside of the Fusion module. Now I am working on a Mac, but don't worry, I will be calling out shortcuts for both Mac and Windows, so no matter which platform you're on, we'll have you covered. The goal of these tutorials is not a quick introduction. They're going to be in-depth and designed to give you as much information as possible to make working in Fusion as easy and straightforward for you as we can. And lastly, we value your feedback. If you like this tutorial series or have questions about anything you see or want to see, head on over and post them in our forums at lowpost.com slash forums. All right, enough of an introduction. Let's get into Resolve and start working with Fusion. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, I've set up three shots here. Now I've set up three shots just to show you how we're going to be able to get in and cycle through different shots that we're going to want to do compositing to. Now how we take a shot from our Resolve timeline and take it into Fusion is fairly straightforward. Everything is actually already set to go in Fusion. All we have to do is simply open the Fusion module and once we do the shot is there. Now you'll notice that that was almost instantaneous. When I clicked on the Fusion module, boom, Fusion appeared, we're ready to go. Now that's because I've already loaded up Fusion before we started recording this lesson. Now if I hadn't loaded Fusion up before, you're probably talking about waiting maybe five seconds at the most the first time you load it up, and then once you start switching back and forth, the switch is almost instantaneous as you see. Now I'm just going to come back here for one second because what happened was is that with the shot that I'm currently parked over when I switched into Fusion, that was the shot came up and I'm parked at exactly the time that I was inside of Resolve. But what happens in a situation where I might be parked over two shots, three shots, four shots, or more shots? What's going to happen when I switch into Fusion? Well, let's do it. I'm going to come down to Fusion. I'm going to select Fusion, and you'll notice that what Resolve has done is it's chosen the shot that's the highest, I'll call it, on the food chain, the shot that's on the topmost layer to take into Fusion. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. You don't want to be constantly switching back and forth between Fusion and Resolve to pick different shots to composite with. Ideally, it's much better if you had a visual way to get in and do that. Now, it might not seem like there is one, but there actually is. We just haven't turned it on yet. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to navigate right up to the top to where we see a little button marked as Clips. Now, as soon as I press that button, you'll now see that what I get is almost like a film strip that's going to appear at the bottom that's going to be all of my shots that are currently in my timeline. I do have three of them, and this is how we're going to easily be able to switch back and forth between shots so we can get in and composite quickly, again, like I said, without having to switch back to the Resolve timeline. Okay. Now, with that being said, I'm just going to close the Clips view for just one second because it's a lot easier for me to see right now what's going on without that there. So let's talk about what's going on here. Okay, now we are parked over that shot. Let's just double check which shot I am actually working with. We'll just go back to the first shot here, and I'll switch back into Fusion. Now we're dealing with our first shot. So once we switch into Fusion, I get the default Fusion layout. Now we're talking right now specifically about the Nodes window. Now these nodes represent my clip. Now what's happening at the beginning with Media In 1 is this is the shot. Media Out 1 represents what we're going to see in the timeline. We're going to be adding nodes in between Media In 1 and Media Out to create our effects, whether it's tracking nodes or blur nodes or merge nodes or channel boolean nodes, which don't worry, we're going to get into all those different types of nodes as our lessons progress. But basically, to create our effects, the nodes are what we're going to use in between these two nodes here, our two main nodes, to create our effects looks. Now, one thing I also want to point out is that this can be a little bit confusing once you start working. Okay, now right now I have one called Media In 1, Media Out 1, and that's fine. But once I start getting in and adding more footage into this composite, I'm going to have something called Media In 1, Media In 2, and I could have, you know, 15 different Media In nodes, and to be honest, I'm not going to know what anything is. So what I need to do is make sure that I stay organized when working in Fusion. 
Okay, and we're going to do that by getting in and as we add nodes, specifically clip nodes, we're going to get in and rename them as we go. Now the shortcut to rename nodes is F2 on the keyboard. Now keep in mind I am using the standard Resolve keyboard layout. So if for some reason you're using F2 and it doesn't work, that's the reason why. Okay, so I'm going to hit F2 and we're simply just going to call this media in our timeline. Okay, and I'm going to say OK and you'll see that that node's name has now been immediately updated. And keep in mind if I was to switch back to Resolve and come back into Fusion, that naming convention will stay there. Now, to be honest, you're really in most cases only going to have one media out node. And to be honest, you could probably just leave it media out one or you could call it output or call it whatever you want. To be honest, I don't normally change the name of this node. I like to just leave it the way that it is. OK, let's move on now. I want to talk about the viewer and what's going on up here. And I think before I do that, I'm just going to add a basic node in between my two nodes here just so that I can get in and show you how we can control what we see. So I'm just going to call up a blur node now. With this node selected, if I go and add any node to my composite, it's automatically going to be added between the two nodes that are connected together. So let's do that. I'm going to hit blur. You'll see blur has been added. And what I'm going to do is just give this a relatively good blur. Okay, good. Now, you'll notice that right now on the right viewer, we seem to be seeing the output of the blur node, but that's not actually the case. What we're actually seeing is the output of the media out node. Now, how do I know that? Well, I know that for one simple reason. If you take a look at the media out one node, right down here at the bottom, you'll notice two little circles. One is not selected, the other is selected. What this represents is our two viewers. Currently right now on the right viewer, I'm looking at the output of the media out one node. If I turn that off, it's going to disappear. So what this is actually very handy for is, for example, let's say I needed to see the blur node on the right viewer, and I wanted to compare that with what the shot looked like before that when it just had nothing on it. I can then get in and call up our media in our timeline node up on the left hand viewer. So this is where things can get very handy. You can have multiple nodes in your composite and you can get in and turn them on and off on whichever viewer you're going to want to see them on literally by just clicking on one of these two buttons. Okay, so keep that in mind. And you'll notice that as I hover over them, I get the tooltip pop up saying this is the right view. I'm viewing this on the right view. And if I come over here, let's see if it'll give me the tooltip on the left side. You'll see it just says left view. Why? Because I'm not actually viewing it right now. This, because I'm viewing it on the right side, tells me I'm viewing it on the right view. This one over here will tell me that I'm viewing it on the left view. Okay. Now something else that I do want to point out up here in our timeline, right here underneath our two viewers, is that you'll notice that I have two bars here. Okay. And you'll notice that if I drag the time bar down, that I get an update as to what is happening in my composite. But if I come back and I come before that endpoint, that everything goes gray. So what exactly does this represent? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that with the shots that I have in my timeline currently, they aren't from the very start of the shot. With this shot currently that I have selected, I actually started that shot one second in. You'll see I'm at 24 frames right now, and I have that in my timeline all the way down to frame 90. And at frame 90, we then cut out of that shot and go into the next shot. So what these represent is the in and the out point of my shot. Now let's talk about rendering before we wrap things up. How do we get in and render things inside of Fusion? Well, actually all we have to do is simply switch back to the edit module. And what's going to happen is, is that Fusion and Resolve are automatically going to start rendering this clip. You'll notice that the bar at the top of the timeline switched from orange to blue. Now meaning that this shot has been rendered and it's now ready for me to play back in real time, just like such. Now, one last thing before we wrap things up, if I'd like to reset everything back to the way that they were, have those two nodes right as they were when I switched into Fusion, we can do that by right clicking on the clip and simply navigating up to Reset Fusion Composition. And once I do that, I'll be prompted by Resolve. Do I want to reset the Fusion Composition? Yes, I do. And now it's going to happen when I switch back into that Fusion module, you'll see these two nodes have been reset. That blur node is gone and we're ready to start again from scratch. 
Okay, I think that's a good place to leave off in our first lesson. Now, I want to remind you, if you like this tutorial, if you have comments or questions about this tutorial, or if you have suggestions about things you want to see, I encourage you to head on over and post them in the forums at lowpost.com. And if you have any questions for me, you can email me directly at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.